Maria. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. It's good morning. so lovely to have you here. Um, Thank you. We were just talking about um, how we came into frequency and, you know, how we crossed paths. And you came to see the Tosca uh, with my company, Everybody Can Opera. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you had such beautiful words and it was so lovely to be to receive that, you know, our company, Everybody Can, is, you know, a company run on a shoestring as most companies are but we work with the most wonderful people like William Conway who's um, the conductor and you know we've worked with directors like Rebecca Louise Dale and mm -hmm. it's Everybody Can is about just giving people who are a bit older the opportunity to do roles that they've never done before mm -hmm. and um, also to have experiences of what they've never done before and just to give them a chance mm -hmm. you know and to sing roles maybe or to do you know things like conducting or putting a choir together that they would never get the opportunity to do and mm -hmm. i love that about everybody can but also mm -hmm. telling traditional stories that make and make them relevant for today so um mm -hmm. so yeah so. no i have to say this performance uh, well i was very touched by this performance really oh thank you well thank done you. To, to all of you because it was it was magic i have to say oh yeah. thank you Thank yeah. you. Really, yeah, no, really. I, mean, I, I was very impressed on well your your generosity, the capacity of transmitting all all these feelings yeah. through music, and this is something that I always appreciate on on artists. Uh, so you. normally I'm I'm a bit shy to approach musicians yeah. and and say, wow, I really love it. Mm -hmm. Especially, I mean, when when I don't know this person personally. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I I wanted to do because I think you. Well, I I I I felt very touched by this. So. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you so much. That just means so much. Um, good morning, Ian, Ma Ian Massa Harris. Lovely to see you. Um, so hello everybody it's 901 and I am Nadine Benjamin and I am a certified high performance coach I am also an accredited NLP uh, mind coach NLP means neuro the brain linguistic how we speak to the brain and programming how we set ourselves up into limitless beliefs or limited beliefs and I normally help people to break through some of the limited beliefs so they can get to the other side I love, 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 love connecting, champion, championing and celebrating people. And um, this morning we are here to celebrate Maria Canigal. <laughs> Can, Canigal. Yes. Oh, come on. I, this is like, on days like this, I really wish I, I learned Spanish. <laughs> yeah, well, don't worry. Even the Spanish people have trouble to, to pronounce my surname. So Maria Canigueral has been described by La, by La Vanguardia as a pianist of great personality. One of the leading lights among the new generation of Spanish pianists, Maria Canigueral has inspired collaborations with outstanding contemporary Spanish composers such as Anton Garcia Abril, Bene Casablancas, Joan uh, Magrané, uh, Josep Maria Guis and others. Having spent her formative years between Spain and the UK, she has since attracted a devoted following of her worldwide concert series, no, worldwide concert itineraries. Her solo album for Audite has been recently released to great acclaim from magazines such as International Piano and Pizzicato. She won the gold medal at the Global Music Awards in California for her album of works by Cecil Frank, Granados, Skerjank and Finzi, recorded with violinist Lana Trotosek. Is that? Yes. Trotosek. <clears throat> with Heavenly Records in 2016. She has recently recorded the complete set of sonatas for violin and piano by Beethoven with violinist Lana Trotosek again. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here with us. It's so wonderful to have a Thank pianist. Um, it's really, really, really wonderful to have you on. And um, mm -hmm. as I've al always said to everybody, um, 
I, we're here for connection. So just to remind you, I know it's Friday, we're going into the weekend, reminding you just to make sure that you give yourself some rest time, to give yourself some like an artist date where you take mm. yourself out and you know on smell your favorite flower mm. or go to this candy store and buy your favorite sweet um, have a bath with candles around it mm. um, pick up the phone and let somebody know that um, they're loved and you know maybe tell someone if you need to need that you're feeling a bit lonely or mm -hmm. that you need some support it's all okay you know mm -hmm. we are all humankind before anything else we are humans and you know we need that type of connection just because we are physically isolated does not mean to say that we have to be emotionally isolated mm -hmm. but That's thank true. you <laughs> mm -hmm. but thank you so much maria 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 tell us what was your first like musical experiences Hmm. Well, I started very little, um, that little that I don't really remember <laughs> much from that time, yeah. Uh, but what I remember very well is to be involved in choirs uh, among other, other children and teenagers. Yeah. And this, for me, was very special because I guess when you start with an instrument when you are little, the first years always are, are tough. Uh, mm. You need to learn. Well, you need to learn how to how to how to approach the instrument first of all. So this can um, stop a bit to connect with music. But mm. when you are singing, perhaps it's the most natural thing to you to do for a yeah. kid, and and to be surrounded with other fellows of your age is yeah. like something that you you feel that uh, well you are part of the same thing. So I, I guess it, it helped a lot to, to fall in love with music. Oh, wow. singing in choirs. How, old, how old were you when you started singing in choirs? Uh, well, I cannot really remember the age, but I started uh, attending music uh, uh, school when I was four. Oh, and then wow. the, the choir was part of the school. So yeah. I guess perhaps, uh, I guess, uh, well, I was singing from the very beginning in the school, but I guess in the choir I was a bit older when I attended, perhaps six, seven, I yeah. cannot really remember, but yeah, yeah something like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's so amazing that you were in a choir from the age of four. Well, not really age of four, but uh, yes. Yeah, like yeah. A very early stage. Yeah. A very yeah. early stage, you know. Yeah, but you know, when you start in this age, you start like a game. Uh, you don't really realize what you're, you are doing. You, you, yeah. you just go there because your parents put you there. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it happened that I, I like it and, and, and I continue up to yeah. now. Yeah. So how did from that singing space and from the choir space, how did it manifest that you had a relationship with the piano? What happened? How did that happen? Well, at some point uh, after two years, when I was six, then it was time, well, I mean, I, I, I pick up an instrument. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah, I guess the easiest option was <laughs> to pick up the, the piano because yeah. Is perhaps the most available yeah. <laughs> instrument in the music schools, right? So yeah. it's like the first option available, perhaps. So, yes, I pick up this one, but I guess if I would have picked up violin or flute, I will be another kind of uh, instrumentalist. Yeah, I will yeah. be perhaps a flutist instead of a pianist. That was luck, pure luck. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I like it, obviously. And, <clears throat> and yes. Um, you know, the, the connection with singers has been through many years because then first I started singing, but then I continue accompanying different choirs. Oh. And this gave me uh, another perspective of, of being a pianist because, mm. well, when you are attending the lessons, you are practicing your own repertoire, mainly alone. Yeah. And perhaps if you are lucky, you will do some chamber music, which is great because I really like interacting with other musicians. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, as part of the school, I was accompanying different choirs. 
Um, and this gave me also the capacity of, well, I had to to make my, my own accompany, uh, accompaniments for them and then to be aware of harmonies all the time and, yeah. Yeah, and, and to just learn how to how to do chamber music or how to accompany singers. Yeah. And this, I'm very grateful of this, of, of this uh, um, period of my life because I, I think I, I learned a lot and this has been useful up to now. Yeah, and how does it feel um, so you, you know, you you have had the fortunate of accompanying singers, but then you play these big pieces on your own. How you know solo piano playing? How what how, how, what is that experience like? Um, well, playing solo is is the most difficult thing to do. Yeah, um, yeah, it's like um, well, um, lots of pressure. Uh, you you need to you are alone basically so you <laughs> you cannot share the pressure you cannot share the good and the bad things it's just all on your shoulders yeah. uh, on the other side I I really like it yeah and well that was a process because obviously when I was younger perhaps going on a stage alone it was something uh, I I had to work on. Uh, I mean, mentally as well, not to, yes. to cope with this. And and it's not that now I don't feel nervous. Uh, yeah. I think this never will disappear. But <laughs> yeah, but but you know, at, at some point you learn how to live with this. It's part of the of the profession, and and I'm just trying to to treat the day of a concert as normal as possible. So I don't stop. Of drinking my coffee in the morning because no <laughs> i can yeah don't drink the coffee in the morning otherwise you will shake look i need this coffee in the morning <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you know these kind of things that uh, uh well sometimes musicians um we tend to to make to establish some habits before playing and i'm trying not to establish too many habits because then it, it seems that Without these habits, we cannot go on stage. Yeah? Yes, yes. Uh, but you know, during during this lockdown, um, that I have been from March to July without concerts, all yeah. were cancelled, as everyone else, right? Uh, yeah. But then in August, I had a very nice August. Um, so some concerts were there, and I felt. I felt this. I felt like the first time I, I went into stage again, I had to relearn how to deal with with um, well with nerves, with uh, yeah. being nervous and with the stress of going yeah. into stage. And this is something that uh, perhaps audience don't really think about this, right? Yeah. Um, but is is um, just to to teach the mind. To deal with uh, with the yeah. stress before going on stage. Well, this is something that I, I guess we only can learn um, playing more and more. Yeah. As as more as we play, less stressed we feel, yeah. or at least we can deal better with this. But this is a, an ingredient that always will be there for a concert. I love that you just said that, Maria. Uh, morning, Grace. Morning, Grace is saying, um, Grace Loveless is saying good morning to us both. Um, um, I'm so, uh, you just touched me, actually. Um, mm -hmm. And you just, you just, you just made me feel like I have to speak something out because you're right. When we return to stage after not being on the stage for so long, we do have these moments of, of what all I can describe of is, great fear around the pressure of that being on stage when you come out of habit with it mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. and um, I had my Royal Opera House debut um, a few weeks back and I got to perform on the Royal Opera House stage it had always been my dream and I wanted to be there <clears throat> and we had a dress rehearsal in the afternoon and then we had the main show in the evening well Maria let me tell you that dress rehearsal I think I just unraveled. 
I did it, you know, I did it. You know, I didn't not do the dress rehearsal, but I knew it wasn't me. Mm -hmm. I knew it was just, it was all of my nerves. It was all of my insecurity. It was everything in one. And for most people who know me, <clears throat> they know that for me to say this, what I'm going to say next, that it must have been severe because I got off the stage and I left the rehearsal space and I called my mum. Mm. And I was like, mum, I can't do it. <laughs> you know, I'm an everybody can woman. And <laughs> she was like, mum, I can't do it. And my mum, like, I think she, you know, I never call my mum for anything like that. Mm. I think she was just so shocked. I think she didn't know how to deal with me at mm. first. And then I just burst into tears and just couldn't stop crying. And then, mm. um, then my mum said, okay Nadine that's it you get in front of that mirror and you start affirming who you are <laughs> and, you start da -da -da -da, and then you get out your bible because my mum's very uh, uh, into her bible and you read psalm one two one and you make sure that you do that after you do your mirror mirror work and then you get on that stage and i tell you what it was the best route to coming back into my power that she could have given me because then I found all my high performance friends you know people like Darren Abrahams I'm like come on this is high performance time this is time to show how these tools actually work da 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 and then mm. I went on that evening and I was the artist that I knew I could be mm. so That's thank me. you yeah. for sharing that because um you're right we don't talk about those dark nights of the soul that those dark moments um yeah well you know when before entering on stage when you you are waiting back backstage yeah mm. you 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 are hearing the the audience mm. and, and at least two three minutes before entering mm. this is actually hell yes <laughs> Feeling that you you want to run away, right? Yeah. Uh, but you know, then you enter, and obviously, um, it's, it's it's great to to be involved with music, and then you just focus on on the work, and and that's it. If the preparation has been good, yes, then you know exactly. Uh, that's why that's why what I like very much as well is like work a lot at home, practice a lot. Yeah. Make sure that I put lot, lots of layers of paint. Yeah. Piece, you know, <laughs> that if some of them fall down, still I have some. Yeah. And um, yes, I guess it's a question of trusting ourselves as well. But yeah, that's not always possible because I think we are very vulnerable in a way. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. As we don't know how the results will be until we finish, we have this always this uncertain feeling, no? How a concert is going to be, and we put a lot of ex expectations to ourselves as well. Mm. So all this creates these scary feelings. But yes, we need to deal with this. We need to accept this. This is yeah, part of our, yeah. our and, I, and I think most of the time, you know, I, I you know, we can get we we the the feelings of fear and the feelings of excitement are exactly the same feelings. So mm -hmm. I think sometimes we can choose to say, instead of saying, I'm feeling mm -hmm. really afraid, or I'm feeling right, it's like, I'm feeling really excited. And I think mm -hmm. that's what happened in the process from me being in the afternoon to the evening was when yeah. I went on stage, I was like, I'm really excited. Like mm -hmm. you take control of your mind, like you're saying, Maria, mm -hmm. you know, and really claim, reclaim your mind. And I'm a mind coach. So that is hyper, 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 hyper important to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but Maria, tell us, you know, managing safe at home as a pianist, what has that been like for you? And, and, and how have you, what have you been doing? Like, share with us. Yeah, well, the beginning, <clears throat> obviously, the, the first feeling is um, when concerts started being cancelled in March, the first feeling was being disappointed mm. because this year, 2020, was looking very promising for me. Yeah. Uh, like some nice solo recitals and then being solist with orchestra and then chamber music. And I was really looking forward to all of this. And 
And then suddenly, from March, everything stopped. Yeah. And well, you know, the, the first feeling was disappointment, but then very quickly, I, I think I started feeling like, well, there is a, a very nice opportunity in front of me that I have suddenly lots of time without following any deadline. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, musicians all the time, we are, well, you know, this uh, like all the time living on the lines. So in two weeks, I need to learn this. And now three weeks for that. And now two months. And, and all the time this working for the next deadline. Mm -hmm. When suddenly you don't have deadlines, um, is, is in a way great because <laughs> I, I said to myself, okay, now I want to to use this time to to learn things. I want to to keep growing in a way. No? Mm -hmm. So I decided uh, to explore repertoire I didn't do before. And, and well, I felt playing lots of music by Wach. Mm -hmm. So I started doing and fugues and you know I started more like a personal challenge saying every week I'm going to learn one and and I was recording myself and I, I, I was correcting through the recording what I didn't like and recording again and it became a bit like a, well like a, like a game I, I was enjoying like a little kid because then <laughs> listening and wow that could be better okay i'm going to do it again and and then at some point i thought well if you are recording why not to to share some of these recordings online on social media because well uh you know these these times social media if it is um used properly i think is a is a great tool to yeah. have and well in times that we are not exposed on stage i guess we need to keep saying hello and that we are here yeah and we keep doing things we keep active somehow so yes i, I was sharing something uh, some some of the recordings and and i i spent the majority of the of the first lockdown doing this uh, <clears throat> also it gave me the opportunity to prepare very well concerts in the summer because I was hoping, yes, okay, by the summer, perhaps concerts will restart. Mm -hmm. So I have I had this major project of performing the ten sonatas for violin and piano by Beethoven with mm -hmm. Anna Trotovchek in Juliana Festival. So it gave me the opportunity to really prepare this well because perhaps if the activity will be normal, like having concerts every month, um, I think I will not be able to prepare it so, so deeply because I had just all the time to do this. So yeah. Yeah. It, it was great. And then, yeah, arrived the summer and and I, I, I could play these concerts in Ljubljana and also in Palau de la Musica in Barcelona, I offer a solo recital, which this was very beautiful experience as well yeah and well as well during lockdown uh, a solo album was released <laughs> amazing yeah yeah music by Mumpo and and some <clears throat> uh commissions uh to different composer composers over europe so i asked them to to write a piece uh, with similar similar format as Mumpo did in his cycle of canzones y danzas Mm -hmm. um, and well, this music, at the beginning I thought, wow, a CD to be released during lockdown is not such a good thing to happen. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, I thought actually it was great to happen during lockdown because people were at home perhaps more receptive to, to see what's going on, which, mm -hmm. which albums are re released. And then, well, it had a, a good response and, and also I think this music, Mumpo music, is perhaps, um, well, representing very much the time we are living in, um, because it's very slow motion music, very introspective. And I think, yeah, I, I think it, it suits well to, to these times, 
times that we all had to learn to live more in in simplicity, right? Yes. Yeah, and yeah. to to leave behind unnecessary things. So yeah. this music is about this uh, connecting with our most valuable inner world. Yeah, yeah. Tell, yeah. So why Bach for the first lockdown? Why Bach? I cannot say. You know, I cannot say, but I felt like this. And funny enough, many friends uh, felt like this. Many friends, pianists mm -hmm. I, uh, that we were sharing, we, we were sharing experience. They told me, yeah, they felt like playing Bach. Perhaps because it's it's very honest music, and also yeah. it's written in such. A, a structure so well structured that perhaps keeps I don't know our mind clean yes. and yes. I don't know and makes us happy when we play this no it's yeah. like um, yeah. tidying up cleaning up things it's like keeping us clean it's, it's like pure it's, it's very pure yeah honest so I like honest music then if if you are approaching a piece that is like this then I mean performers we need to approach the same way yeah as well. we need to just approach with the same honesty yes lovely yeah really mm. good and, mm. and you know we're in this safe at home time and um where do you feel how do you feel for you as a musician what changes do you think are going to happen now for you i mean uh, it's it's have you got any has it made you think out of the norm in terms of how you want to show up in the future? I don't know. It's, it's difficult to say because, uh, yeah. of course, of course, I'm scared. Um, because now we, we have this second lo lockdown and I didn't take it as nicer as the first time. Uh, yeah. It's more difficult for me to... Yeah. To feel this opportunity in front of me to learn new things, I I, I feel a bit like that I uh, somehow I want to come back to to the normal routines, to be back on stage more regularly, and and just you know, well, I guess as everyone else. Um, yes, I don't know. Still, always I'm trying to keep optimistic. So I hope from something like this something nice can happen as well and we all will learn how to make the culture and art alive again yeah. um, well you know it's when we say um society needs art that's yeah. true yeah. well i really i really believe this that society needs art too yeah to be to express the best of a human being right yeah. but you know arts meet society as well yes. and and we could could feel this now artists yes. and all people who is involved in art industry yeah. that society is so important for us yeah. and it's not the same to perform live stream is that that to be in stage and to feel the audience because the concert is made by the performer yeah. but the music of course but the audience and by by the whole right uh, where you are and all these um, are all ingredients to 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 make the the experience the, yeah. the music experience that night that evening Mm. And yes, so I really hope uh, we can have this back very soon. And you know, I'm 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 grateful um, to be in the UK because I can see. Um, I'm very impressed on the 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 UK audience. Really, it's like such. Um, they really they really appreciate us. Yes. And, well, not only music, but you can see. Uh, expositions exhibitions in museums are sold out straight away and 
yeah. and conscious as well. So if you want to really attend things, you really you really need to hurry up because people are really aware of, of things going on. And I like this very much, no? So this gives me this hope that art is alive, that uh, people want to consume this. And, yeah. and uh, you know, when now that we have this, um, well, that everything is paralyzed, that we don't have this, uh, obviously I'm a bit afraid that people might lose the the need or the habit to attend live live events um, and I think this this will be a, a big mistake so I'm, I'm really hoping this will not happen yeah, yeah I think I really hear you Mira I, I think um, the fear about people not wanting to attend live events I think we don't have to worry about that I really do because people as much like what you were saying that synergy between artist and audience that we work together we're integrated we both need each other <laughs> <Much so>. yeah <laughs> and the way we make an audience feel the audience makes us feel as well you know mm -hmm. so it's really important that we still continue to have live events and i know the Jerwood space put out a live fund, a live work fund. Um, I think it closed last week or something where it, it, it's gonna give grants to 31 people mm -hmm. to, keep music, to keep live music alive mm -hmm. for 2021 and mm -hmm. to look at new ways of presenting live music. And I think people are very aware that you know, this has got to, this has got to happen. Yeah. But I also identify with you when you talked about this being the second safe at home time and it being a touch harder mm -hmm. and I, I, I'm going to identify with that because for me I didn't feel anything during the first one I was just like yeah da, da, da. I mean apart from that when BLM happened and then it was all over but you know but but in terms of this for this time what happened for me in the first couple of weeks um or the first week and a half was I was hit because I, I had had concerts to the end of the year and um they had just been reinstated and da, 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 and then yeah. crash they just yeah. all stopped again and this mm -hmm. was the second time it had happened yeah and i think feeling this for the second time a, a, a wealth of loneliness came mm -hmm. up in me mm -hmm. i knew i wasn't alone because i had the most amazing friends like I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones in that in that regard but this loneliness of not having anyone to wake up to, not having everyone to go to bed with, not not having anyone to make food with, or da da da, because I'm here completely alone, mm -hmm. was was huge then for me yeah. in, in this second time, mm -hmm. and and then I had to relook at what we were talking about earlier was the the the, the mind, like how was I going to keep my mind active mm -hmm. to a, go through the pain of the loneliness because that's yeah. really important so I started talking it out with people you know and picking up the phone and then once I talked it out it was almost like I found this inner strength that I didn't know was there waiting for me and I re-engaged with myself in a different way than, I'd, than I've ever engaged with myself before mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I became stronger and now I have this power that even though I don't have this significant other or person, I I still have me mm -hmm. and I still have this higher force, you know, or this spiritual force that works within me. Mm -hmm. And um, it's here every day with me and I, I, I wake up with that. I go to mm -hmm. bed with that. I make mm -hmm. food with that. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you and yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was a beautiful exchange. Yeah. You know no well you know yeah it's uh, of course we have moments that can be very tough yeah but on your side um thinking what is a musician right yeah uh, i think we are lucky because it's not only a profession it's like it's a condition yeah <laughs> It's like being, no? we are uh, musicians. So then it means even if projects are not out there, 
always, if mentally we feel strong, we always can create our own projects, our own challenge and goals. And I like like organizing short term goals, let's say every week or, yeah. or then long term, like in one month's time or even longer, no? like in one year time. Yeah. And I think this, well, it works for me. Uh, perhaps it doesn't work for every, everyone, but it works for me. It keeps my mind calm that yeah. I keep I keep going. I keep yeah. doing things. I keep learning, which I like feeling uh, yes. like this, that I keep developing. No? Yeah. Mm. Martin Stiles, um, who we had on this program before, said that we he's a like a therapist for the mind and everything. And he said, you know, we always have to have something to look forward to, mm -hmm. you know. I was telling you before we started that I'd had done a brain dump last night. So that's all my things to do list. <laughs> Those two pages of it, you know, but I had written that things to do list because I knew that that was all the things that were in my brain and they're my goals. I need to put them down and then I need to work with them one by one and mm. just keep going through the list until it's completed. And mm. that, means I'm still moving forward a day at a time so thank you um we have Sukka Sukaza from mm -hmm. uh, Japan who's saying good morning and, we have good morning, Grace. <laughs> and uh, Grace Loveless is saying you're both saying so much that we're all thinking the solidarity among artists is keeping me going thank you oh thanks oh, Grace for saying that beautiful yeah so beautiful yeah. you know so tell us, Maria, mm -hmm. if you were to um, share three tips today, you know, what would what would your three tips be about? Mm. Well, I will share probably the ones that I'm applying to myself. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> sometimes yeah. work, sometimes don't work. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, that's funny. I always say to people, you know, people say to me, you know, you're a coach and you're this and you're that and I goes yeah but I can only teach as far as I'm willing to go I can mm -hmm. only teach what I live and I, so it's so lovely to hear you say the same thing mm -hmm. you know and yeah. sometimes it's great and sometimes it's not but that's all part of the whole you know yeah so. no you know I, I like being organized and and this is something that uh, well when I see your list um, uh, somehow I feel familiar with this because I have the, the need of writing down uh, in a notebook things that I want to do. Yeah. Um, like, um, you know, in, in this career, uh, it's like, uh, well, sometimes we need to approach organizers and then uh, thinking about new programs and things like this. And if I keep everything in mind, I'm, I'm getting stressed. So I like to write down what I want to do, and then what I have done, and things like this. Yeah. Uh, so I will say the first tip will be in times like now, when it seems that um, world is a bit uncertain and, and we don't know where to go, in times where it seems more disorganized is when probably we need to be more organized. Yeah. So I like keeping a schedule. Yeah. Like, treating my job in a way like an office job, although it's yeah. not at all an office job, but like waking up in the morning and do my practice and then afternoon as well. In a way, do things that uh, that at the end of the day, I feel like, wow, I did something. And keeping what, what I was saying before, keeping short-term goals, mm. long-term goals, mm. because when there are not imminent deadlines then perhaps we need to create these deadlines yeah. for us no mm. to keep us going motivated and absolutely and yeah feel, feeling um uh, aware here to to give a space to yes to create and to to develop yes, yes. towards a new direction so that's that's the first tip I guess, yeah, yeah. keep organized and make a schedule. Yeah. The second one perhaps might sound a bit um, basic, but uh, I will say eat well, 
Yes. And cook well for yourself. Yes. Um, you know, I, I like cooking because yeah. for me it's like, well, if I have the time to do, yeah. um, for me it's very relaxing. It's, and in a way, it's similar approach as, as a concert. Yeah. You, you use a certain ingredients. You prepare a specific um, recipe. Yeah. But at the end of the day, never tastes the same. Yeah. And you, you only know at the end of the cooking process when you try and then you say, oh, yeah, that's amazing. Oh, no, that's not that good. So we need like a concert, right? Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. I think that is important what we put into our stomachs. Yeah. When I put nice things into my stomach, I feel happy as well. You know, like. Yeah. And it's eating, I'm eating myself well. It's eating food to support your life. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and to support your body. Yeah. 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 That's important, yeah. Yeah. And the third tip, I will say, yeah, let's keep smiling. Yes. Mm. Oh. Um, yeah. Even sometimes it's easy to to become pessimistic, but I think it's better to keep optimistic. Yeah, the same efforts, I guess. Or yeah. well, perhaps a bit, a bit more, but then the results are better. Yeah. So let's keep optimistic. Yeah. Um, mm. Oh wow, I do. I feel, I feel so moved by you this morning. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there, is, there is a beauty in your spirit that I haven't seen in someone for a very long time, and. Oh. Uh, it, Thank you. It's it's really your your utter stillness and your authenticity in to just be at the center of your vulnerability as well as your strength is so commendable. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Oh, yeah, no, it really is. It's really commendable. Mm. Um, so where can um, we find your CDs or how can we find you? Uh, well, this CD... Um, released by Audite. Yeah. Uh, you can find it in Audite website. Yeah. Also online on Amazon and yeah, so and Apple Music and I think some online shops as well. But yeah. yes, if you enter into Audite website and yeah, Audite. Audite in there. Is it Audite? Audite yeah. Yeah. I'll just write it yeah. down so people... It's, it's a German label. Okay, yeah, I'll just put mm. it... It should go into the box. Somewhere. Yeah, if, if I guess if you Google my name together with Audite, it will appear, the link. Yeah, is that, mm. is that how you spell it there? A-U-D-I-T-E? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so thank you, much. Man. Yeah, thank you so much for being such a wonderful, wonderful guest. It's just been it's so lovely to have you on Monday, Monday, following on from what you've been talking about, about the mind, um, which is really, really important. You know that that's my thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm all about the mind. <laughs> um, I'm going to have one of my high performance colleagues come on on Monday called Natasha Moggs Addis. And she will be talking about high performance tools and um, ways that we can be more effective in this time mm -hmm. and with ourselves. Um, and um, yeah, because as Maria has been talking about today, it's essentially the relationship that we're having with ourselves at the moment that will eventually give us the opportunity to be authentic, more authentic with our audience. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah so it's it's just been yeah I, I feel yeah I can't yeah I just feel very moved by you today so thank you oh, so thank much you. and um, Gabrielle is saying calm and reassuring with wonderful analogies she's saying that about you Maria mm -hmm. um, thank you so yeah thank you. And thank you everybody for being here Ian Grace Sukasa um and gabby thank you so much all for being here and whoever else is watching and whoever else does watch this um thank you for being with us and remember go into the weekend as i always said at the beginning but maria is reminding us again schedule 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 even if you are taking rest time schedule your rest time let it be yeah. choice choice let mm -hmm. it be a choice um mm -hmm. and not just you know a lethargy 
you know, because then that way you know that you are in charge. We're not in control of what happens everywhere, but we are in charge of who we are and the people that we are right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so take care. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maria. And thank you so much, Maria. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you.